Hello, I'm Ken Lees. I'm the uh, past president of the European Stroke Organisation. I'm here at the fourth ESO conference in uh, Gothenburg. And it's a great pleasure to welcome here uh, one of my uh, colleagues from across the, 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 the little pond, uh, Professor Clay Johnston from University of Texas in Austin. And uh, Clay, it's, it's a great pleasure to welcome you, not only because I, I, I know you from before, uh, but, but you have uh, yet again taken the what we would call pole position in terms of having the, the last slot in our large trial session. So to do that once wow. is very good, to do it twice is, is a great achievement. And you've done it this time with the point trial. Correct, um, yes. So the point trial is, is one I've been looking forward to for a while because I, I followed a previous trial, you did the chance trial, yes. and I thought it was very convincing and I've been implementing some of the the practices from that, but most of my colleagues have not, so I'm out on a bit of a limb, and I'm really excited to hear what it is that you've been up to. You'd better tell our friends about the point trial. Sure. Why, are, why are you doing this? What is the point of it? Well, okay, good. Yeah, so the um, so actually, point was designed before chance, um, and it's just taken a whole lot longer to get it done. Um, but uh, but as, as you know, we were um, interested in whether dual antiplatelet therapy with clopidogrel and aspirin, giving clopidogrel uh, as a load, would be superior to aspirin alone in patients with high-risk TIA and minor ischemic stroke. Um, and for us, we, we pushed the time window to um, having to be randomized within 12 hours of symptom onset um, and treatment for, for 90 days. Um, and uh, the reason we felt it was important to continue it, even though chance was positive, uh, was that um, chance was was purely done in China, um, and uh, you know I think we did a good job with that trial. It was I mean in some ways it was a really remarkable trial, and we uh, completed recruitment uh, faster than we had had planned, um, and what at a rate probably five times faster than what we were t what we were able to achieve in in, in point. Um, and the results were really clean with you know, adherence that was remarkable and um, agreement to participate that was remarkable. Um, uh, but patients uh, were treated in other ways very different than they would have been in, in Europe or uh, in, in the US, raising concerns about uh, the generalizability and, and the types of stroke, of course, different there as well. So we thought it was very important to continue uh, the point trial and the DSMB ag agreed um, and so we, we pushed ahead. And in any case, there is a, a general um, feeling that we should validate, we should, we should um, r repeat any, any result that we've got. It's, it's nice to have a, a second look at these things. I, 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 think, I think so. Um, I mean, obviously, if we do that for everything, we're, we're at least doubling our costs yes. and, and extending the period of time before we make decisions about new treatments. So um, it, we have to balance that. Yes. But in this case, I think without it, being truly representative of the kind of care that, that happens across the world, I think it would have been risky to, to uh, completely generalize from those, those trial findings. So do, do tell us a bit about the, the, the trial itself now. How, how many patients uh, are in point and, and really what, what is the, the, what, what, what's, hap what's happened? What's the result okay, of the yeah, trial? Sure, sure. Yeah, so 4,881 patients. Yes. And they were enrolled mostly in North America, but mm -hmm. some in Europe, um, uh, a few in Central America, um, and um, uh, that, that's most of it. So these are patients who are getting what you would regard as standard of care. They're getting the, the, the best standard that we understand at the moment. Yes. Right. And most are receiving statins, uh, most are getting imaged in appropriate ways. Yes. Um, and uh, you know those with cardioembolic stroke are getting pulled out because they should be on anticoagulation. Okay. So um, so yes, it's it's high level care. Yes. Um, and then yes, it's the, the randomization between two versus one antiplatelet agent. Okay. So we're balancing all of that. the potential for reducing the number of ischemic events against the potential for some risk from bleeding from having two antiplatelet drugs together. Correct. And you know, chance didn't see an increase in hemorrhage. It saw it in minor hemorrhage, or with all hemorrhage put together, including minor. But 
Um, those were trends. It wasn't that, uh, uh, it didn't see any difference in, in uh, major uh, hemorrhage. So that's correct. So we, so what we in fact found was a 25% uh, hazard reduction for uh, major ischemic events. So the trial was positive in terms of efficacy. Um, so it was a 6.5% 90-day risk of uh, stroke MI or ischemic vascular death at 90 days, 6.5% in the aspirin group, 5% in the aspirin clopidogrel group. Um, those numbers actually were lower than in chance there. The uh, stroke rates were higher um, uh, in, in chance, but that kind of makes sense too with the uh, uh, a patient population they were treating. Uh, and it makes sense because you are giving all of the other treatments that we're aware of. There's no, there's no cost issue generally for, for, for treating in, in, in the US and Europe. We, we, we're, we're, we're doing our best to give all the other appropriate tra mm -hmm. therapies. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, and even in chance, not uh, only was roughly half of the people with hypertension were actually prescribed in any hypertensive okay. medication. So there's a, there was a big difference in that and those uh, kinds of treatments. Um, yeah, that's right. I, you know, that's a piece of it. I, you know, whether those things could act soon enough to change the natural history is one of the things that we're really interested in. So I, I, I honestly, we don't know what the difference is. In the, in the subgroups, um, the, the group with TIA with lower risk TIA, so ABCD square scores of five and lower, um, had a, a lower risk of events and no benefit of, of treatment. And again, subgroup analysis, but it, it, it may be that we had um, more mimics because we were driving people to uh, put people into, into the trial. Okay, but look, you've got a very exciting positive yes. result in yes. terms of ischemia. Absolutely. What about the risk side of things? Because you haven't told me about that. Okay, and that's very important as well. So there was an increase in major hemorrhage, right. um, and uh, it was over a doubling in risk, but it was still small. So it was a 0.4% uh, risk in the aspirin group, 0.9% risk in the aspirin and clopidogrel group by 90 days. Um, and that's major hemorrhage. There um, was no difference in fatal hemorrhage. There was no difference in intracranial hemorrhage or in hemorrhagic stroke. It was, the difference was primarily due to systemic hemorrhage in the two groups. So you've got three times as many prevented ischemic events as you have increased major bleeds. Correct. Now, if you were having to choose between having an ischemic event of the type that these patients might have been having or a bleed of the type that the others might have been having, which would you choose? Which has the greatest long-term risk to the patient? Well, maybe I'm a stroke doc, and so I, I may be biased, but for me, you know, preventing... Uh, an ischemic event, almost all the ischemic events, by the way, were strokes, were right, ischemic strokes. Right. So, so disabling. And most of those were disabling, yes. and most of that is permanent, even if it's not yes. identified as disabling. Yes. So for me, uh, that's an easy one. I'd, I'd much rather uh, deal with my mostly GI hemorrhage, yeah. which might even in some cases be revealing an underlying pathology, yes. Yes. Um, and, um, and have that temporary event uh, uh, be treated and avoid a permanent event. So to me, the trade-off is clear. Um, you know, I don't know, are there people who would disagree? With, well, there's some people who are so against any treatments that increase risk of anything, but I would say that's a, that's a bizarre way of thinking because they're effectively increasing their risk of, of, of ischemic events by not treating. Now, the difference, if I can go back to the CHANCE trial and in maybe even to the MATCH trial, which I remember from long before that, MATCH trial being a long-term treatment with, with dual antiplatelet, in that case aspirin clopidogrel against clopidogrel, but it seems to me that the, the risk of bleeding is something that is there over a very long period. Correct. The shorter you can give the treatment, if you can target patients who are at high risk of ischemic events, maybe the better. And the difference between chance and point, if I've picked it up correctly, is that chance treated for only three weeks with the dual drug, you treated for three months with the dual drug. Chance saw very little in the way of increased bleeding risk, but the reduction in ischemia. You saw reduction in ischemia, but an increase in bleeding risk. What do you think about the timing, the duration of treatment, now that you've seen the two drugs? Because you were involved in both. I was, yeah. Um, the, uh, and, and interestingly, you know, when, when that change was made in, in CHANCE, that's not one that I had promoted. They, 
that was related to anxiety about a, a greater risk of, of bleeding in Asian populations. That's where that came from. Yes. Um, but I think in retrospect, it, it made sense. Um, and uh, in, if you look at our results um, stratified by time, and again, one has to be really careful about all these subgroup analyses, yes. Yes. And, uh, but it is true that um, most of the benefit of clopidogrel aspirin was concentrated in the first 30 days. There, we, we did not see a benefit from 31 days to 90 days of the combination. And the risk of hemorrhage was similar in the first 31 days as the later period. So in other words, in the 31 through 60 days, we saw an increase in hemorrhage and no benefit in ischemic events. Again, subgroup analysis, but argues that just as, as you did, consistent with chance, that it might make more sense to use the combination for a shorter period of time, like 30 days. Okay. Well, Clay, I, I love it when we get a positive result. I like it even better when it's a result that I was hoping for. Uh, I have to congratulate you for, for conducting yet another superb trial, one that really will inform practice. And I know that I need to let you get back to your activities, but I think that your, your, your full results are going to be published in one of the prestigious medical journals uh, later today, and, and we can read about it in more detail there. That's uh, correct. Clay, thank yeah. you very much indeed. And from us at the European Stroke Organization uh, Conference, uh, goodbye for now.